everyone, it's Lucas here with Yoga Body and the Yoga Teachers College. And this class, this master class, is on choosing a yoga teacher training course. Many, many years ago, when I was choosing my first yoga teacher training course, I just spent a whole bunch of hours online, and all the courses kind of sounded the same. They all had Yoga Alliance, they all had some anatomy, they all had some philosophy. They were all taught by some teacher who was about 15 years older than me. It was all very confusing in terms of trying to pick a course. And these days it's gotten much more challenging with so many different courses offered in so many different places. So I've been training teachers for a long time. I thought I'd put together a quick presentation that will hopefully be helpful for you no matter where you end up. So our agenda today is I wanted to determine your teaching goals. Think about time and money considerations because obviously that's a big factor. Think about whether this is a business or a pleasure decision, meaning are you doing this as a personal sabbatical or are you looking to actually start teaching professionally? And then real talk about your options, looking at options from a, a very practical, pragmatic standpoint. So in terms of the, the reality of the market right now, there are over 8,000 yoga teacher training courses around the world. When I first started, there was about 800, now there are 8,000. So it can be totally overwhelming. This masterclass, it's really designed to help you find the perfect course, or at least a very good course for you based on your goals and what you're hoping to do. A little bit about me, I'm a yoga teacher since 2003. I've been training teachers since 2006. I've certified 4,000 teachers. They're teaching in 41 countries in 23 different languages. And I've owned four different studios. Currently, I own three studios. So I have quite a bit of background in this. Hopefully, I can shed some light on this process. So first, let's talk about determining your goals. And what I mean by that is your first goal that you need to decide is how deep do you want to go with yoga? And what I mean by that is, do you want to have deep experience? Like, do you want to be a, a very knowledgeable student, a very experienced student? Would you like to be a paid professional where you're not just a great student, but you're actually getting paid for your work? Or do you want an expert status where perhaps you're an influencer, perhaps you're writing books, perhaps you're leading workshops or teaching at yoga conferences, perhaps you have a, a really steady following? How far would you like to go with this? And I know it's a difficult thing to think of at this stage if you're just early researching. If you're like, you, you, know, you don't know where you'll go. And way back in 2003, when I was first starting, I certainly didn't think that I would start studios and have a podcast and do all these things that I ended up doing. But I wish I had taken some time to have some, some foresight because it, it really would have helped me to, to lay the path for, for greater success. So think about what you'd like to do ideally and maybe put a pen to paper and write it down. In an ideal world, where would you like to teach? And I mean geographically, and I also mean physically. Would you like to be in yoga studios, in fitness centers? Would you like to teach privately? Are you looking to go into the public sector, which would mean like uh, you know schools and, and, and government buildings totally happening these days? Are you looking to go into private sector jobs in unusual scenarios like um, private fitness clubs, sports clubs? Are you looking to go into a corporate setting? Think about, again, I know it's really early days, but think about in an ideal world where you'd like to end up and it'll really help you to choose the course that, that fits with what you're trying to do. And then is this a job or a career? When I first started teaching, for sure, for me, it was a job. What I meant by that is I thought I would last a year or two and go on and do something else. I wasn't career minded. It's really helpful if you get clear on this early, because again, you can start laying the groundwork for a career rather than just a job. I wasted a good couple of years when I first started because I wasn't really clear that this is what I was going to invest my career in. And so I was making very short term decisions and choices when I should have been thinking much more long term. Time and money considerations. So the first thing is, how much are you willing to commit to this process? Meaning uh, all, all yoga students have a different level of commitment. If your commitment is I'm willing to do a five day course or I'm willing to do a weekend course or, you know, it's, it's summertime now and I'm willing to do this for a couple of more months. That's very different than if you're willing to commit to a training journey that might be two months, three months, might be six months, might even take a year. It's a very different level of time commitment and that'll really help you make a, a choice based on a course that's right for you. There are absolutely courses happening this weekend where you can go out and do a two day course and they'll give you a piece of paper and whether or not that's going to be valuable for you, I don't know, but you need to get clear on how much time are you really willing to invest. For example, there's many, many people who would love to be medical doctors or chiropractors or therapists, but they're not willing to put the six, eight years into schooling. They just aren't. You need to think about this. Obviously, we don't need six or eight years to become a yoga teacher, but think about how much time you're really willing to put in. Is it a weekend? Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? How much are you willing to invest in this time-wise? It'll really help you get clear on how committed you are and what kind of course is going to be best for you. Next, what's more important to you is low value, low cost or high value. And what I mean by that is if you, of those 8,000 courses, if you go out and look at all those different 8,000 courses that are available, you'll find some that are really cheap, like 
$800, $1,000, $2,000, really inexpensive courses. Some of them are a full month long for you know $1,500 or something like this. And then you'll find courses that are really high value, not necessarily high cost. It's pretty difficult to find a high cost course, at least from my perspective. Yoga training is very, very affordable. Uh, there are a couple of really high-end courses that happen at five-star hotels and things like this, but they're, they're the anomaly. For the most part, courses are pretty competitively priced. And so really what you're looking for is are you making a cost or a value decision? I had a trainee come to my course and he told me that his very first teacher training course that he did, he was coming to my course as a second. He said his very first one, he just wanted the cheapest thing and he just wanted to go have fun for a month. So he found a course that cost $1,500 in India and off he went. If that's where you're at, totally fine. Get clear. Are you looking for a cost-based decision? Are you looking for the cheapest place to go? Or are you looking for the highest value? Meaning if you put your money in there, it's going to come back to you many times over throughout your career. It, we're at different places in our life. You need to figure out where you're at because it'll really affect the decision that you make. And then the other question is, is this even possible for you right now from a time and money perspective? Is this even realistic? Can you do it? Right? Um, meaning if you just had uh, twins and you just took on a new job, maybe it's not the best time for you to do a teacher training course. Maybe it's just totally impossible. If you just uh, lost your house and you're going through bankruptcy again, maybe it's not the best time to do a teacher training course. You can lay the groundwork for the future. It's an important thing to think through because there's different times for everything. Here's a, a really important question which nobody ever asks, is this for business or is this for pleasure? And when I first started yoga teaching and yoga training, even for me, it was really for pleasure. I never thought there was a, a career path for me. I never thought in terms of business. Turns out there was. But again, if I had gotten clear on that earlier, I would have made some different decisions. But for you, is this a sabbatical? Are you trying to escape your, your busy life in the office for a couple of weeks? Are you trying to escape a, a home situation that's not comfortable right now? Or is it a, a career? Are you trying to make a business move where you want to start a studio, start teaching professionally, build up a career for yourself? In an ideal world, what's your outcome? What's your ideal outcome? Sometimes in an ideal world, people just want one month to run to Bali, to relax, to do some yoga, improve their back bends, meet some cool people, and then get back to quote unquote real life. If that's where you're at, I totally respect that, but it's important that you get clear on where you're at right now. So the, the training industry, let's talk about the, the industry. I'm certainly a part of this deep in this, and so I can tell you a lot about it, how it works. The first thing you need to understand is that most yoga courses, they're really yoga camps. They're not real training programs. They are a lot of fun. And what that means is a, a yoga camp, you do all the things you do at camp. You eat meals together, you sing songs, go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. That's what a, a lot of yoga training courses are like. They're adult yoga camps and they're a lot of fun, but they're not real training camps, meaning they're, they're more like summer camp and less like a vocational school. There are, there are yoga schools that are more like a vocational school, but they're a very, very, very small minority. Destination courses, these would be things like uh, the one month in Bali, the three weeks in Thailand, the, the 21 days in Costa Rica. These are very often run by yoga nomad type people. So people who travel and teach for a living, people who perhaps haven't had a home or a mortgage or a, a real job in many, many years. And uh, it's something I did when I, when I first started teaching and I used to travel around and teach all the time. It's just important to remember what kind of course you're getting into, something to think about. Then there are local studio courses. These are run by many, many yoga studios around the world. The sad reality about these courses that are run by your local studio is usually it's a financially motivated decision. What I mean by that is the local studio business. I, I have three of them. I know the math. It's very hard to make them work financially. And so what people do is they throw up a teacher training course pretty much as a fundraiser to pay their bills. And that wouldn't be bad, except that in many cases, they don't have the curriculum, they don't have the structure, and they certainly don't have the passion to train teachers. So they end up throwing kind of a mediocre course up. To make things worse, they're training you to be a teacher, but at the same time, they don't really want you to teach because in many cases, they're worried that you'll become their own competition. It's this really weird catch-22 with a lot of local studios. This is not true for all local studios, but the vast majority of them are creating courses to raise money. They're training teachers, secretly hoping that they don't teach. Unfortunately, this is kind of the reality of the industry. Um, Let's take a look at the at most courses, about uh, less than 10% of graduates from most schools actually teach. Some of the biggest training schools in the world, uh, whether it's Shivananda or whoever it is, about less than 10% actually teach. So people go to these camps, they have a great time, but they don't actually teach. And for most people, that's no problem. For me, it's a huge problem because it's my whole career. So you need to think about that before you get into a course. There's a lot of so-called traditional courses, and you'll see these on Facebook. Um, they're usually in India. They're in Rishikesh. It's kind of a hub for these kinds of courses. 
and uh, they have the lowest post-graduation teaching success rate. So at my studios, I hire teachers all the time. I've been hiring teachers actually for 16 years or something like that. The least likely people to hire are people who've gone to these traditional courses in India. I think maybe someday that'll change, but right now they're the lowest quality trainings in the world. They're budget trainings. They're, they're, they're kind of a cultural experience that people have, which are totally fine if that's what you're looking for. But if you'd like to teach professionally, probably not the best course. Then there's destination courses. Those would be things like uh, Costa Rica, Bali, and Thailand are probably the, the most popular destinations right now. These are sometimes really great courses. A lot of times they're more about a holiday experience, but cost-wise, they're often two to three times a city course. So a city course might cost two, three, four thousand dollars, and a destination course might cost four, five, six, seven thousand dollars. So they're often many, many times more expensive. There's a lot of guru-based courses out there. Often these gurus are, are Instagram influencers who throw up a course. And some of these people can teach really well. Most of them can practice really well, but not necessarily teach. But the bigger challenge is they often don't have a, a infrastructure behind them. So they don't have a support team. <coughs> they don't have an office staff. They don't have a, a training manual. They don't have any administrative help. So a lot of the organization behind these courses is kind of a disaster. Um, city courses. So the cost of city courses is really pretty similar around the world. So if you're looking at a course in Chicago, a course in Barcelona, a course in London, uh, a course in uh, Buenos Aires, the cost is going to be pretty similar. They're usually around 2,500 to 3,500. Some of them might be as high as four or $5,000. Some of them might be a little cheaper, but they're really pretty competitive. So really what you want to judge is the value, not the price. If you're basing it on price, you're not really doing a, a good comparison. It's the same way you could, you know, on the street here in, in Barcelona, you can go out and buy a pair of knockoff Nikes down at the port, but they'll only last a couple of days and they're just a little bit cheaper than the originals. So you should probably buy the originals. So I'd encourage you to value shop if you're buying a, a local course, not cost shop. Many schools force recertification. This is something that I find really annoying, meaning every year they make you pay additional fees and come back and train again. It's kind of this pyramid thing where you just have to keep paying money to your school. I don't think that really makes sense, but some of these do. You should be aware of that. Many schools, like we talked about, actually discourage graduates from teaching as it creates competition. A lot of these local studios, they do this. They, they reluctantly graduate students because they're worried they'll create their own competition. It's kind of a scarcity mentality. And unfortunately, it drives a lot of the local studios. Let's talk about the yoga camp option. This seems to be one that's pretty popular right now. And uh, Rishikesh in India is definitely the hub for this. There's a lot of cheap, fun yoga camp courses. The typical routine is you sing songs, you do a bunch of yoga, you wear orange robes, you do Sanskrit and Vedic chants, you eat lentils. At the end, you get a little piece of paper that says you're a yoga teacher. Unfortunately, it doesn't go much further in terms of the value of that piece of paper, but you will have fun. You'll probably get diarrhea. You'll make a bunch of friends and it can be a really fun cultural experience. I've done these courses myself. And uh, if, if you're looking for a fun time, it's a really great way to do it. If you're looking to teach professionally in a fitness center or a school or in a corporate office, definitely not the right choice for you. So you just have to see if that's the right way to go. Island destination courses. So these, um, I, I, I taught these and produced these for many, many years. Bali and Thailand are probably the top destination courses for islands. In terms of non-islands, there's places like Goa and things like this has some uh, really well-produced courses in some cases. Most of these courses though, they're focused kind of on this once in a lifetime experience that includes food and travel and adventure and culture and friendships and bonding, which is amazing. You'll have a lot of fun, you'll make memories, you'll have friends, but the training aspect is really a big question mark. There are good destination courses out there, but a lot of them are, are really focused on the tourism and the travel and the experience and the adventure and less on the yoga. That's not all of them. There are some great courses. I certainly used to produce really great courses but it's something you need to keep in mind. And the price tag is definitely very high. The last option is the one that I've become obsessed with, which are career-minded courses. They represent less than 5% of the courses on the market, for better or for worse. It's just the way that it works. And so the better schools that are career-minded, that are professionally oriented, the better schools are attached to a professional studio group, meaning there's an actual real studio and a system and a business model behind the system that you're getting trained in. And in these courses, you want to make sure that you're training with working professionals. You're not training with professional trainers or yoga nomads or hippies or anything like that. You're training with people actually working in the field because they give you real world training and real world knowledge that will actually be applicable when you're working as a paid teacher yourself. In these courses, 
you should definitely expect to work, study, and practice very, very hard. There's less kumbaya, less less singing of songs, and less this kind of thing. It's really focused on on the pragmatic skills of the vocational skills of teaching yoga. Um, you will get a real teaching credential, and you should have the knowledge to start making money as a professional right away. So again, if you're looking at value. Uh, and you're looking to teach professionally, this can be a really great way to go. So my story, just to give you a little backstory, as a student, I've done all these types of courses. I've done the, the, the Sing Song D Lentils kind of courses. I've done tons of these destination courses, primarily in Thailand, where I lived for many years. I've produced and taught and been involved with a huge part of my career. And, um, and not all of them were great. And, and currently I'm focused on these career minded courses. This is my big focus of all of the types of courses I have attended and participated in. The career minded ones are the ones that got me the most value, get me the most excited. So that's really where I put my focus and where we put our focus here. So my question is, what's your story as you're listening to me babble on about this stuff, as you're trying to figure out what makes the right, what, what's the right decision for you based on your time, your money and your real interest? Like, what do you really want to do with this? Is this, if you're being honest, is, is this just a fun thing you'd like to do in the summer? Is this a sabbatical? Is this a career thing? Based on, you know, what you'd like to do, get honest with what you'd like to do. What, what makes sense? You know, what kind of course makes sense for you? The one thing I would caution you is to not let insecurity get in the way. I've had so many people come to courses and when you ask why they're here, they say, oh, you know, I'm just thinking about doing this. And the reality is in the, in the back of their mind, in fact, in the back of their journal, they have detailed plans for a yoga studio that'd like to own a, a, an apparel line, a yoga apparel line that they're planning, but they're insecure to stand up and just declare that that's what they're about. They're worried they're too old or too young or too big or too thin or whatever it is. I'd really encourage you to put your insecurities aside for a little bit, at least for the sake of this little masterclass and dream about what you'd really like to do. Are you hoping to open a studio or start a retreat center? Would you like to spend half the year traveling and teaching? Are you hoping to become a, a local corporate yoga teacher? Are you hoping to, to run your local yoga festival? What would you like to do? Insecurities aside, experience aside, assume all of that will come. What would you like to do? And then my, my other suggestion, which I always say, is take advantage of the rare opportunity you get to study. You just don't get that many times at bat. You don't get that many times around the sun. And so make sure that this month, this three weeks, however much time you spend, make sure that you really do it in a way that makes sense for you because you might not get another opportunity to do it. So here's the, the key learning for you is get clear on your goals. Figure out what you want to do. Is this a vacation? Is it sabbatical? Is this business? Is this pleasure? Think about time and money. Can you make this work right now? And if you can make this work, what's more important to you? Just something that's cheap and fun? Or would you like to actually invest in value, meaning put your money in and get something back? Figure out if you're in this yoga training thing for business or for pleasure. Is this just for fun? Or would you actually like to build a business? And then look honestly at your different options. What makes sense? Do I want to go to a yoga camp? Do I want to do something exotic and kind of luxurious like a month in Bali? Or would I like to just put my chin down get to work and go to a vocational skill, learn vocational school, learn this professional skill of teaching yoga so I can go out there and start something for myself. All of them have value, different places in your life, different things make sense. Um, uh, so we have, the, we have a school called the Yoga Teachers College. If you'd like to learn more about it, you can check it out at yogateacherscollege.com. It's certainly not for everyone. It's the most rigorous program that I know of in the world. It's kind of designed this way. It's really for career-minded teachers. The big difference is we focus on the science of yoga, we're business positive, so no chakras, no chanting, no incense, no ohms. We teach people how to be mind-body fitness professionals, and it works really well. Our, our graduates are extremely successful from both a results for clients perspective and also from a financial perspective. We also have continuing education. We have at-home programs. So if my personality and my message and, and what I've said has resonated with you, I'd encourage you to check us out. If it hasn't, I'd encourage you to keep searching. Hopefully, this masterclass gave you some insight in terms of different options and different things that you could think about. If you have any questions for me, I'm available. Just email me at lucas at yogabody.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that's helpful. See ya.